Okay, hey, hey, how's everyone doing tonight? My name's Kurt, I'm a dad who draws, and I want to welcome you to Wednesday Night Live. We get together every Wednesday night, and we and we review uh, how to draw a human portrait. So, in light of this month being October, um, I'm giving a choice to our Facebook group of what portrait they want to draw and I threw Frankenstein into the mix and he got the most votes so um, this is what we're going to be drawing tonight if, if you'd like to hey John how are you doing tonight if you want to participate in the voting because every Wednesday I will post these pictures and uh, I let the group choose which one they want to draw just jump on over to our Facebook group join it and you can have an opportunity to vote on which picture you would like to draw. The link to our Facebook group is down in the description and um, that should that should get you going. Okay, so I'm glad you're here. For the next hour, we're going to slowly work our way through uh, this portrait and hopefully you will pick up something as we go along the way. Feel free to uh, send me your questions. I think only if you're subscribed to the channel can you submit a question? So uh, by all means do that or, or just chat and I will monitor that and keep my eyes on that and engage. So uh, anyways, if you do like the video, do please uh, give a thumbs up and throw a comment is always helpful as well. All right, well, come on, let's get started. So first thing I want to do is, is let's get rid of Frankenstein for a minute and just kind of go over just a few basics because sometimes especially for beginners the uh, uh, especially for beginners the drawing a portrait can be very intimidating or hard so let's see what we can do to simplify that okay so let's let's start off with just uh, three spheres all right and and down here in the left here, I, what I want you to do is is to draw three smiley faces. All right, three smiley faces, and we're gonna I'm gonna give A, B, and C. Make sure I'm on my line. Okay, excellent. All right. So if I was gonna look at face B, let's just say we drew a circle around that, like just like this. We would we would say that that face is looking straight at us. You see that. On B, if I shifted that circle over to the right, this would give the impression that B is looking off to its right. You see that? And finally, if I was to draw a circle around C lower, this would give a sense that C is looking higher. It's, he's lifting his head towards us. So the first thing you have to determine is where is the face? Is the face looking straight at me? If it's off to one side, if it's off to the other, is it looking up or if it's looking down? Uh, and then that's where you want to put your face and that's going to help reinforce whether it's a three quarter view, a, a forward facing view or an up or a down. Okay. All right. Let's name these A, B and C. All right. So when I first draw step into drawing a portrait I think of three things I think of the 2d axis the 3d axis and the face placement what do I mean by these well let's start with a and let's just say let's just say my face was tilting a little bit to the right that would be the 2d axis so the first thing you have to determine is the head leaning to the right or is it leaning to the left all right so let's look at B, let's look at A and say this is this is looking straight up at us, okay? Straight up. B, let's say it's leaning a little bit to its left. And C, we will say it's leaning to its right, all right? So that's that's the 2D axis. All right, let's get to A here. Let's see on A now, on this on the 2D axis, it's leaning forward. Okay, so it's coming towards us. Well, then we're that's the 3D axis. It's coming towards us. 
And then what we're going to want to do is draw an eye line that represents that idea. You see? That means you're going to see more of the head. Okay, in B, let's say B, all right, so let's let's get B here. B is leaning over this way. And uh, let's say B is, is, its head is up. So the 3D axis, it's falling away from us. You see this? So now my eye line is going to be like something like this. And then in C, C, let's say our picture is looking straight at us, but it's at an angle. Okay, so the 2D axis is going to be something like that. All right. So that's the 2D. That's the 3D we just did. Let's talk about the face placement. So on A, let's just say, all right, I got my 2D. I've just determined that it's coming toward me. Now, the last thing I got to determine is which direction is the face facing, you see? I could stay on the same 2D axis, the same 3D axis, but change the direction of the face. So on A, I could say, the face is pointing in this direction. Or, if I don't want that, I could say the face is pointing in this direction. Let's do that. Let's put the face in that direction there. So I'm going to go across the brow line, like the top part of a T, and that's going to be the center line of the face. All right, let's look at B. Let's say this guy is looking in this direction. Coming across with the letter T. All right. That's the direction he's looking. And on C, let's say he's he's looking out over here. All right, so we're gonna come across with a T here and then straight down. So now, once I've determined the 2D, the 3D, the position of the face, now I want to find the temples. The temple, the temples are right here on the outside of your eyebrows. So it's going to be right there and right over here. Let's look at B. It's going to be here and over here. And on C, it's going to be here and right over there. Now, a head, a head is both flat on the sides, and if I turn it to the side view, it's also very round. So what that means is at the proper angle, we actually can create a straight line or a round line. So over on A here, let's start here with this temple. And let's slice off the edge of that sphere. And those are the sides of the head. Let's come over to B now. Let's slice off the side of that head there like that. There are the two sides of the face. And then let's come down to C and do the same thing for C. All right, there's the sides of the head right there. The last thing we want to do then is get the side, get the location of the chin. And a lot of times the chin, if you were to divide between the eye line and the chin, it's about halfway. This this might change from person to person, but uh, but that's that that can be a pretty good guide. Let's come to A now. We're going to drop down just a little bit for the jaw and then s sweep around. Sweep around to the other side. And there is your basic head volume. Let's do that to B. Let's come down just a little bit. Sweep it around. Sweep it around. There's the ch bottom of the chin right there. All right. And lastly, for C, we're going to come down a little bit, 
sweep that around and sweep that around okay so those that is your basic head volume this is something if you're brand new to drawing heads this is something that you want to practice over and over and over again until you really get these key foundations okay okay well with that being said let's go ahead and jump into our our main picture tonight that being the Frankenstein all right so let's let's take a look at Frankenstein here and and ask ourselves some questions okay let's let's write up here 2d 3d and face placement all right so let's look at the 2d axis is he leaning his head to the right or is he leaning his head to the left or is his head straight up and down well i think his head is straight up and down so let's let's go ahead and just put a line that represents his head straight up and down this is the axis all right my next question is is his head leaning forward or is it leaning back all right what do you think well his head is leaning back and we could tell this we could tell this because we really see the underside of his nose but here's a little trick I'll, I'll show you this I'm gonna draw this and you could draw this over the, on the side of your paper all right so here's here's three heads right here okay let's call this a b and c okay a let's let's draw our eye line like this and let's do the same thing for b and the same thing for c and let's be aware of let's just pretend like here are the temples here are the temples for each one of those the, the temples are the side of the eyebrows okay So if, if you happen to look at the ears and the top of the ears are lining up with the temples, just like that, that's going to tell you that that is looking almost straight at you. All right. Next, if the ears are lower than the temples, that means that this person is looking up. It means it's to the head or the head is tilted back. Or your point of view is from down below looking up at them. You see, those are the three scenarios. Or in B now, if, let's just say the ears were higher than, than those eyes. Well, that would indicate that the person is looking down. So you can actually, you can actually see that as, as I'm wearing glasses. So if I look straight at you, you can see my glasses line up with the top of my ears. If I look down like this, now you can see my ears are higher than my glasses. And if I look up, you can see that my glasses now are lower than my temples, okay? So as we look at the Frankenstein monster here, we can see actually that he is looking up at us. Let me get rid of those little guys there. All right, so let's let's go ahead and and get this get this idea of 3D. And this time, we're going to draw two two lines on the side. This is going to represent the sides of his face, because when we look, a lot of times when we look straight onto a face, this it's going to be it's going to be straight lines on the side, and we will be able to just adjust these. This is merely just a um, gesture at this point all right let's get the top part of his head and get a nice round uh round top there it's it's almost it's almost like his head is a giant cylinder that's not that's not a bad way to think of it all right
All right, let's get that brow line in. And that brow line, as you can see, is also very round. <clears throat> now let's 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 take a measurement here and just kind of see. Let's let's see the width of his nose. So how do we do this? All right, so if I've established, you could see on my page where this mark is and where that mark is, right? You could see that. And this is like the tip of his nose. So you could kind of look at that distance and estimate it's it's a little on, it's about half that. Do you see that? So I'm making a visual measurement here. Half that, it's gonna be right about here, I think. All right, this is gonna be like a, I think it's a parallelogram. This is the side of his nose and let's, let's do something like that. Okay, there, I've just kind of guesstimated about where the temples of his eyes are. Okay, let's do this now. Let's take a, let's try and determine how, let's just determine where his chin is here, okay? So we could look at our drawing and we see where this mark is. And we can see the bottom, bottom of the chin. You see that there? So let's estimate this distance. It's gonna be right about there, I think. Okay. So let's make a mark on our page that represents that. So we're up here, down to there, great. And probably about right about there. That's gonna, that's gonna be the, where the top of his chin starts. And then from the top of his chin to the bottom of his chin is about half that distance. Let's see here now. So if I go half, yeah, that's about right. So let's, let's get that in as well. So I'm about right there. That's going to be the, the bottom of his chin. All right, so this is this is about the the location of his mouth, and all we're doing right now is we're just trying to get some markers, trying to get some uh, markers on our page to really get our proportion down. All right, so if I'm right here at his mouth, and I use like a horizontal line. Visually, now I'm not going to draw this horizontal line. I'm only going to use it mentally in my head. You could see about where it's coming in contact with those ears. So let's see. I'm right there. Okay, so if I'm just going to guesstimate this. All right, so that's that's about where my ears are going to come. This one, I'm just going to freehand this now. Where is the top of my ear here? Okay, it's going right through the nose. And this is going to come right below the mouth. All right. I think we could use those marks there, right? So. Right above the nose. So we're going to. We're going to come down like this. I'm just kind of using straight lines to get a good rough idea of where those ears are going to fall. All right. There's the bottom of my chin. And now I can kind of just 
get an angle here and an angle here. We're, we're kind of still kind of placing our different features here. Let's, let's get our chin in. Our chin is going to be something like this. And then the next thing you want to do is find... Hmm, if I'm going too fast, just slow me down, okay? All right, let's see here. I'm going to, I'm going to close the window. Hold on real quick. get the barrel of our mouth in because that's going to help us to place the mouth barrel of the mouth comes right right behind the nose and right it runs right below right behind the the chin there all right let's get our nose Let's get our nose in. So first thing we're gonna have is that third eye or the gabella. I think that's called the gabella. I'll have to double check on that. All right, there's the sides of our, our nose there. All right, let's get our eyes in now. I'm making mine a little bit larger so you, it's easier for you to see. <clears throat> All right, let's go ahead and continue uh, adding some elements to this. So let's get our, let's find our neck, either side of our neck. And so that neck is kind of lining up. It's coming inside here. And the other one's coming in inside over here. Usually have two tendons. You can't. You can kind of see them, and then of course, he has his Adam's apple. It's right about there. <clears throat> okay, we are well on our way. All right, let's work on this nose here, okay? So I'm going to come all the way up here. And this is going to fan out now the underside of our nose. Look closely now. It's going like this. Almost like a V. Okay. His nostrils.
and then the wings of his nose. And the tip has a little bit of a, a round edge to it there. Now let's go ahead and just drop a middle tone on this. Don't go too dark yet. Just give me a middle tone. <clears throat> All right, let's go ahead and work on these eyes here. Let's work on the uh, this one over here first, the left one. So the first thing I want to do is find establish where the inside corner is. I'll show you. You're going to establish where that inside corner is. And then you want to establish where the outside corner is. Let's do the same thing to the other side. Inside corner outside corner all right here we go nice long long sweep here and then down and the other side is is kind of coming up and it's like almost a straight line, but it's slightly curved. All right, let's let's move over to the eyelid on the left hand side here. Now pay close attention to the negative shape. What do I mean by the negative shape? Let me zoom in here, I'll show you. This, that right there is the negative shape, okay? So we want to be mindful of that. And just keep thinking this wraps, this wraps over an eyeball. And let's do that to the same thing on the other side. <clears throat> All right, let's let's bring in the bottom eye the bottom eyelid now. It's, And the same thing to the other side. Okay, let's come in now and, and get this under the shadow that's going going on and we want to look at what the tone that we put on the underside of the nose here so let's just add that same exact tone we're gonna come back and darken this up just in a bit We just want to equal that tone for right now. All right, let's just leave that there and then we'll come back to it. Let's move down here to the underside of his uh, nose all 
All right, let's establish where the corners of his mouth are. And then let's just draw the top line. What I'm doing here is I'm, I'm, I think my, I think my uh, lip needs to be a little bit lower. All right. Now his lip, let's drop that in with a value. And as, as we keep adding more to this, I'm afraid that I may have, I may have made my uh, chin a little too low. So we're going to kind of make it, a, I'm going to make an adjustment on mine. Yours might be, yours might be right on the mark. So get those erasers out if you have to. Okay. Let's go ahead and then and take that, <clears throat> let's take that middle tone here. And what I want you to do, this is gonna take you a minute or so, I want you to tone in everything. I want you to tone in everything that's not getting the purest white, you see this? If you want to watch me for a second to get the hang of see what I'm I'm looking at my picture and I'm just dropping in an overall tone trying to be as consistent as possible Just get that even tone all the way in. If I didn't mention this before, uh, you know, when you're drawing a head, if, if you're having a hard time trying to keep up, 
one thing you might want to consider is, is maybe you're drawing your head too big. And it, usually when I'm drawing a head, I, I don't, I, I almost make it the size of like almost the top of my hand. Okay, like my, from my, from my palm right here up to my fingers. That's about what covers my head. So that, that gives me a lot of, uh, it's not giant, but it's small so that I can complete it in an hour. So that might be helpful if you are um, running behind. And if you just make your picture a little bit smaller, it might be easier to keep up. Okay, let's come through our guy, our Frankenstein again. And this time, map out or draw in the shapes that are of the darker shadow color. You know, before we did before we did this class, one thing I find helpful I do before class is I try and draw the picture as quick as I can, just to really to familiarize myself with uh, where some of these values are. All right. I'm going to I'm going to come in here and work the shape of his hair in here now. I'm going to come back in here now, but get finished up his eyes. So he's, we've got this dark, almost like the, uh, his eyelashes are coming in here. And then his eyeball is just popping out there. This visor is a little bit darker than the rest, so I want to make sure I get that. Coming in here with this other eye now. Starting to make some smaller adjustments here. He's, he's got these bags under his eyes. So I want to add those. Same thing on the other side. He has some like, it looks like some tissue or something. Rotting flesh over here. So I'm just going to. Add some marks there.
let's work on this ear on the far side here. So let's kind of get that here. So we're coming up here like that. Once again, I'm just looking for the shapes, different value of shapes. Sometimes when you paint, you're always talking about edges. Is this a soft edge or is this a hard edge? And it's it's really the idea is when this when light when light comes in contact of this, is it going to be a hard or soft? So as I'm working the shadows down here, where it's coming in contact with the uh, light side. Those are the questions I'm asking myself. Is that a soft or a hard edge? Now look look at my shadow underneath my chin. That that is really as I like to tell you guys always punch in your darks. <clears throat> when when I am applying shadow or value, I I tend to like try and keep it simple. In that I try and keep it to three values. You might have a middle one, a darker one, and then a lighter one. So I keep asking myself, is this, what area, is this a super dark? Is it the middle or is it the light? And there's going to be variation in that, but nonetheless, that's, Gonna work on the head here just a bit the, the forehead here so again this is coming around <clears throat> let's let's take a look at something here real quick I don't want to leave this off to the last minute here, but let's look at these, uh, the electric nodes, new nodes that are coming out. So this really is like, let me draw something over here for you first. So this is like a cylinder. Some people ask like, how do you shade? Well, this is a simple way to shade. And I use this all the time where if you have an object you might have a very even tone just like that and then where that even tone comes in contact with the lighter value i darken it up right there and this really is going to give like a sense of something being round 
And thanks for the uh, comment, John. It gives us a sense for something to be round because it has this reflective light that's hitting the bottom of it there. So again, let's let's add these nodes in here. Okay, so he's gonna come down here like this. And we'll put one on this side as well. And let's go ahead and do that same thing. Just give an even tone on the bottom. <clears throat> and then right where it comes into the light, just darken it up there just a little bit. Right, he has this big scar that's coming down on his foreheads here. So let's let's follow the surface. And I'm adding variable pressure here so I get some variation. Okay, so now I'm just kind of working through, just kind of going over the whole thing again, top to bottom, and asking myself, oh, should this be darker here? Should that I'm missing a shadow here? Am I missing a highlight here? And I think that's going to do it for tonight. <clears throat> so do remember that you know a lot of times if you draw something over multiple times you get more familiar with it. You start to see things differently than you do first time pass. Let me show you my first time. Let me show you what I did the first time before with class. So that was that was my first that was my first quick study of him. I wanted just to go as fast as I could uh, to try and get a familiar with things where the colors and the values were falling. Uh, I got it. I was satisfied with it and then I removed it and then we went through together here, okay? All right, that's what we got. Hey, listen, my name's Kurt. I'm a dad who draws. Thanks for tuning in. Oh, good, excellent. 
Thanks, Shannon and Angela. Thanks for tuning in. And John, I, I do appreciate you guys watching. Feel free to uh, post uh, post this in our Facebook group. Let me see what you've done. Um, you know, another another fun exercise you could do, and let me just show you one more thing here. If you could do this like almost like a cartoon real fast. So let me, if you were going to do this as a cartoon, this could be a little bit less pressure, but it's, it can be just as fun, all right? So just watch what I do here. And then afterwards, if, if you want to come back and slow this down, you can uh, give it a go, all right? So all I'm really thinking about is just going fast and speedy. And I'm not really worried about too much here. It kind of makes it a little bit more fun and not so like seriously minded. All right, you get the idea? So you don't have to, uh, you could go quick on this and, and see what happens just by pushing yourself against the clock, throwing some shapes down, and you never know what you're going to get. All right? Listen, thanks for watching. Uh, tune in for next week, same time on Wednesday. Uh, we'll have two regular portraits, and then I got another monster I'm going to post. So check that out. Try and vote. Maybe, maybe this... By the end of the month, we'll have a nice collection of Hollywood classic monsters to draw. <laughs> okay? All right. My name's Kurt. I'm a dad who draws. Thanks for watching. You guys have a great night. Okay. Bye-bye. All done.